Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, if for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jeffrey. I am a work up in the Cartersville, Northwest Georgia world. Um, excited to have Simone with us. Simone, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself real quick and what you do within our organization. I think you're muted, Simone. Can you hear me now? There we go. All right. Um, I am the director of productivity here in the Rome office. I help new agents jumpstart their careers. And I also kind of facilitate the day-to-day -day office um, day-to-day. That was um, a very modest introduction of yourself because you're yeah. also a rock star. Reintro Reintroduce her. Yeah. Okay, Simone is uh, one of our top producers in our Rome Business Center. She is uh, from Somerville, correct? <clears throat> so that is north of Rome. So when we say Northwest Georgia, mm, Simone gets what we're talking about. Uh, she lives <laughs> in there and she is a phenomenal productivity coach. Is that oh. better? Oh, uh, can I keep going? Keep going, Matt. So Simone, on the other half, you know, the most important part of her has the biggest why I think I know of. Uh, she cares deeper than anyone I know. That not only translates to her clients, but to uh, the agents that she serves there at the Rome office. And um, she's always looking out for their best interest. Um, sometimes she works so hard to her detriment to take care of those people. Um, but we're working on that. But uh, we're just proud to be in business with you. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thank and you. Then Brett, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know everybody knows you, but for our Northwest Georgia people who are going to be watching later, what do you tell us about yourself? Sure. So I'm the operating principal of the Heart of Atlanta Group, and you know uh, we're here to drive that value and make sure we're bringing whatever you need to grow your business. If it's stats like we're doing today or training, I, uh, that's really my uh, my love and focus is making sure the value proposition is is absolutely what you guys need that's awesome well speaking of stats let's dive into it um we are going to be discussing stats in northwest georgia which encompasses gordon county floyd county and bartow county um brett i'm gonna hand it over to you lead us stat wise can we dive into uh, floyd county first sure you gonna share the screen jeffrey um do i have access to share the screen i think you do all right, well, we are pulling it up. It's gonna be awkward, just a minute, hold on. And I'll just make it less awkward. Here we go. You got it, all right, you got it. I was trying to flip over to it. All right, so- Jump right in, Boy, yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead. So um, I wanna go back, go back to uh, Fulton for a second. Okay. And Fulton's obviously the largest county in Metro Atlanta and we're on Fayette. Yeah, I'm trying to move over. It's coming. It's all good. All right. So scroll up to the graph here. Do you notice anything crazy on that graph? I, I mean, that yellow line. Yeah. <laughs> all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, the closings fell down uh, over the last seven days in Fulton County, which is Metro Atlanta. And I think that's interesting because uh, one is, I think there's always some calendar things that show up in our life. Like obviously when people go on spring break, they don't sell a lot of real estate when they're at the beach, right? Or that, this, that, and the other. So I think there's a little bit of Easter holiday in there. I think there's a little bit of Mother's Day in there. And remember, it's not when they sold the house, it's when they closed the house. So they strategically pick dates that are convenient and maybe last seven days was just not a convenient uh, period of time. But prior to, the industry was doing pretty good. Now, if we jump over to Floyd County, yeah, it, it, all the counties were down. Let's see what happened in Floyd County in perspective. If you pull that graph up, it exact same thing happened. Look at the yellow closing line. We only closed, I think, nine houses in Floyd County last month out of the Georgia MLS, which historically is like half of what we normally do. So, Simone, what happened? <laughs> Don't I think take you a touched vacation. On it with, What's happening? <laughs> with holidays and just 
life, kids having spring break. I think that has impacted a lot. A lot of the schools went on spring break at the same time, even with Chatuga being up a little bit north. Everybody went on vacation, like everything, had, life happened at the same time. Yep. So at, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a it's, uh, cause for concern. The good news is if you scroll back up to the numbers, Matt, um, the uh, inventory is starting to build a little bit. Um, we're seeing uh, that active new listing inventory just climbing a little bit. And that happened pretty much halfway through April. And it's continued to stay going up. So that kind of brings some breath of fresh air if you've got those buyers that you've been hanging on to for a few weeks and uh, you really just kind of seen everything on the market and kind of waiting on something new to pop up. Anytime inventory shows up in our world, that's a good thing. Do I think it could be a temporary increase with sellers that might be a little nervous around interest rates and things like that. And they might've sold their house six months from now, but they're uh, encouraged to sell it sooner. Maybe we'll see. But at the end of the day, inventory has been our, our, our Achilles heel and we're starting to get a little uh, reprieve around that. Anything y'all dad? No, it, we, Matt and I always joke about in my household, we call the month of May mayhem because it is just absolutely mayhem. <laughs> yeah. getting through the month just with everything happening and it feels a little bit you know it, it feels like everybody is in that season right now go. so yeah and it's, it's one of those things right Brett where we will watch this for uh you know an extended extended period of time to see if we have what's called a trend uh we don't make assumptions off of one week or two weeks yet uh if we continue to see this uh trend we can actually classify it and have a deeper conversation around it. Yeah. So and we do the Northwest Georgia once a month, right? So oh. the, what, what does the, the 30 day window look like here? Um, in, in Floyd County, it certainly looks pretty consistent. And that inventory is on a slow uh, build right now. And uh, like I said, I pointed out just a weird closing week. I'm hoping that it's not a trend and it was just a unique, uh, week out there, but that's kind of where we're at. You want to jump over to Bartow? Right. Yeah, let's go to Bartow. I think the Queens are on here as well. Michael and Michelle Queen, they, uh, are they still on that? They, help yeah. quite a, they, they run quite a bit of business in this Bartow County and are able to speak to it as well. Yeah, so if you look in, at the graph, if Matt will uh, scroll over, the closings fell off in Bartow as well. So literally every... Um, uh, every county we track closings just died over the last seven days, which I think is just a calendar thing. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you got me, Matt. I'm trying to bring it over. It's oh, let's just go up to the numbers then. Um, so 83 active listings as of Monday morning is a considerable increase over what we've been experiencing. Yeah, um, you can see if you just move your eyes across the screen here, we haven't had anything over 60, 60 in, in weeks, right? Um, months. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a, this is a big week for Bartow County. I think 20 of those are the Queens. Well, all right. So look at look at the graph at the bottom. See the top line, which is 80 active listings. There's not a blue line over it anywhere. Nope. So uh, it just goes to show you that uh, the inventory in Bartow County is the highest it's been since we've been tracking it. Um, yep. So that's a good thing. And then closings are a little uh, funny over the last seven days. If you Michael, go to, yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask, Michael, what are you feeling? Are you in the market day to day? Are you feeling that these numbers are accurate in terms of the experience you're having? I mean, honestly, from what I see, just talking with other agents and also people in our office, it's still pandemonium for everybody involved. I mean, the price of listing correctly in the beginning, um, just prove to your seller that, hey, this is what the market bears and you convince them this is what the market's bearing just to get those multiple offers. Um, it, it's crazy to say we had a house that was listed in our neighborhood where we used to live um, 
most expensive home in the neighborhood listed it for under 500. It went for over 600 um, hey. last week with like nine offers and they were all like 50,000 plus. Th that was uh, a phenomenal listing, Michael Queen. <laughs> yes, but the neighborhood's average price would be like 300 grand. Right. So there's, you know, there's unicorn homes out there, but like, I mean, the average price point has increased so much in our area. And, you know, what I feel like is good for Bartow are, is there are clients, there are buyers that are going to be looking in like Paulding County, North Paulding, you know, perimeters of Bartow. And, you know, our tax value is still pretty low. Home prices are still pretty low in our area, considered to the surrounding areas. I think it's just going to keep people keep pushing people more north. And, you know, they're adding that 20 minute commute because they're saving hundreds, you know, say, say $100,000 or less on a price point. It's just going to create growth in like Bartow and Gordon and Floyd County. Um, you look at pricing in Floyd County, and I was actually pricing some warehouse space for a client for a possible listing. And I was blown away at how much you could buy a 40,000 square foot warehouse for versus what it would cost somewhere like near Highway, you know, Interstate 75. So just got to be on top of what is happening around us, but don't panic, you know, keep people off the news and just make common sense of every scenario. And, and Bartow County uh, just released, there was a 19,000 acre tract of land between White and the Cherokee County border. So that runs that whole section of Bartow County. That's a little is... misleading how they have that put out there. It's actually several pieces of property. Um, it has a lot of different zoning things happening around those pieces of property, but actually being sign log, WMA, yep. along with just some land that they have dispersed around like near Anheuser Bush. It's just a lot of different segments. So the post itself was misleading. You can look at tax maps and just see what's going on. But like, I, I encourage growth because I just encourage if our industry growth is what gets us, you know, where we want to be and keeps us all successful. So even when I go to like some of the variance board meetings, I hear what people complain about. And I think about is everybody's just trying to save on their property tax. When in reality, they don't think about their home value increase and things around them that creates convenience. Love it. Love it. I like that idea. Changing my perspective on it. Sure. Big time. Yeah, let's jump over to Gordon. Yeah. So Gordon, kind of same story, 22 active listings. Uh, is a good, healthy uh, inventory number. Pendings are staying strong, uh, but closings went in half. I, I, I guess everybody just took the week off, but uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, what's the big overarching story here? It's that uh, inventory is continuing to build and we're not falling off the back end, meaning, um, when inventory builds, sometimes if you stop selling as many houses, inventory builds. Well, we're still selling the same number of houses for the most part, and inventory is still building. So it just says that more listings are coming on the market. Yeah. Brett, I wanted to throw this over to you and, and get Simone and Michael's opinion. I thought you did a great industry update. I think it was Monday. <clears throat> and one of the discussions was around the NAR economic, um, uh, the chief basically spoke on, hey, this is a, uh, this looks like a unique recession, I believe he called. And yeah. I think it's worth highlighting even in this group, because it was such a good discussion with you and Mark in the in-town market, yet yeah. it relates to everyone, especially in this Northwest market. So here, here, here's the article. And NER's chief economist basically uh, threw this article up, uh, or he did their presentation at Inman, of course, covered it. Um, but the interesting thing is the word recession. So if you kind of dive into this article, um, what he's saying is it's going to be the most unique recession or a, a recession different than what we've experienced in the past. And here's what things you need to understand. So here's the formal definition of what the word recession means. It means a decline in gross domestic product, i.e. money we spend in an economy in two straight quarters, meaning we're spending less money in two quarters back to back. Um, first quarter 2022 went backwards in GDP spending. Um, 
we're anticipating second quarter to go backwards in GDP spending as well. So what you're going to hear is recession. And but so when I hear the word recession uh, before, what do I think of? Or, or let me ask you, Matt, what do you hear when you hear the word recession? And, you know, being in the real estate world, I think home price dips, sales dip, income dips, right. uh, well, all of that. It, you know, it, it's a scary sound for what we went through years ago. Right. Yeah. So but here's the thing is the recession of. 2008, 9, and 10 is not the same recession that they're about to declare. And here's why I think this is really important is, um, first of all, we're not in a recession, but there's a 50% chance, according to this guy. Um, but here's what he's saying. It's, it's an, a highly unusual recession in the sense that job openings are sky high. So I'm just going to use the word employment. If you want a job right now, there's a job to be had. If you're wanting a great job right now, there's a great job to be had. So we're not in a recession where people can't find employment and don't have income. We're in a period of time where anybody that wants a job can find a job. So it's actually in a high thing in the sense that total payroll jobs keep rising. So we're actually doing really good from an employment standpoint. That's one point of difference. The other point of difference is um, home prices are going up still. So contrary to the red heart markets of 2021 predicted home sales will fall, but home prices will rise 8%. So now you got this word recession that's going to get thrown around, but jobs are great. Home prices are still going in a, a big positive direction. So that doesn't, that doesn't paint the picture of recession that, I had in my head. Does it paint yeah. the picture of recession y'all had in your head? Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. um, what it means is the spending habits of America are shifting a little bit. Um, and housing may be a little bit immune to it. We'll see, right? Um, so scrolling down here, I think this is the most important chart in this whole article is in 2022, they're forecasting units to go backwards 9%, meaning we'll sell 9% less houses in 2022, but the price appreciation they're predicting to be 8%. So if you realize when you put these two together, the net effect of actual dollar volume of real estate that we're going to sell is negative 1%. So here's who's going to win and who's going to lose in this. People that understand and are focused on units and getting their unfair share of units are going to win. If people are, uh, are so focused on volume but miss the unit count game, they're going to take the biggest hit here. Meaning it's the unit. It's, our business has always been a unit game. Then, but the truth is, if you the real value of this slide is in the 2023 forecast. So home price appreciation of 4% is what every economist expects and, and wants to see for the US. And it sure looks like we're resetting back to normal in 2023. So in a way you could say, we're gonna pay the Pied Piper in 2022 for all this excess and abundance we experienced during the pandemic in our industry. All that being said, it's gonna feel pretty doggone normal by 2023. Now, where in there does the word recession show up? Well, it says we lived in excess during the pandemic and we got a reset to get back to normal. So, of course, that's going to define itself as an, a recession for a split second. But I think our industry will be pretty normal by 2023. How do I know that? This article came out today. Um, I think inflation for the first time slowed in eight months. So everything the government's trying to do is slow down inflation. 
Well, all we've seen is it climbing like this. So now they finally released this today that we actually saw the peak happen on inflation uh, in April, which is, is the best sign of, of that the economy is starting to move back to normal. Um, now, does that Can mean I we're gonna have higher interest rates? Absolutely. Uh, does that mean we're there yet? Not yet. Does that mean we're gonna sell less houses? Probably than we did during the pandemic, but you got to realize the pandemic was like hair on fire. So that's okay. It's a reset. Can I ask, can you educate me, Brett? So is the anticipate, are they anticipating for all of the prices of items, food, gas, everything to go back down? Or is, are we just catching up to, and we won't be in an inflated market does that make sense yeah so here you let's take the loaf of bread what did you what would you pay for a loaf of bread i'm not even i don't have a grocery shop dollar 25 99 cents oh you're crazy you oh wow me. i was thinking like three dollars i was about to say three dollars oh, right? all right you buy the kroger you go to the sunbeam bakery all right so if we're pre inflating at eight percent let's say that three dollar loaf of bread is going to go up 24 cents uh annually right now if we go, we go the peak changes that doesn't mean it goes back to three dollars for the loaf of bread it just says we're not going to go up another 24 cents in the next 12 months it's just slow it, it, it's gonna it's gonna level out the increase will level out so I think gas and, and oil prices in, in your automobile operate a little bit different because there's a lot of supply chain uh, it, it incorporated inside of those statistics. But for the most part, the consumption of America, meaning I buy bread, I buy eggs, I buy clothing, um, those prices of things are going to level out a little bit. So I don't know if you bought an airline ticket recently, but you can see real easy on the airline industry how much things have inflated because those yeah. prices are like way high. Do we think they'll go back down? Not in the short run. I just want to know when I'm going to be able to go to Chick-fil-A for cheap again. You know, Chick-fil-A, have they raised their prices? Yes, sir. All right. So Simone, who's out, you know, she's had a killer first quarter and busy, busy, busy in April. Are these discussions happening for you in the Northwest market? Are people feeling the same uh, inflation, interest rate hikes, competitiveness from your perspective? Um, as busy as you've been, I'm sure conversations are had. I just want to make sure the same thing is, is, is being set up there that it is in most of our in-town markets. Same thing is happening. What I'm also seeing too, Matt, is price cuts. So people are going to have to start having real life conversations with their sellers as far as pricing effectively to get the home sold at the same rate, the same pace. Yeah, we've definitely seen uh, more price cuts and they're happening quicker than they used to mm -hmm. uh, across the board in FMLS the last three weeks. Yes, sir. So yeah, same conversation, same things happening. Love it. There you go. People have gotten used to those short days on market, you know, when you look at stats. Something that our business coach tells us if we list a listing and we don't have offers, plenty of showings, don't get super aggressive and decrease the list price right away. Wait, you know, 21 days before you do that 5% reduction and just be aggressive on that third week. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're used to the days, Michael, back in, uh, you know, five, six years ago where six months felt good. Uh, maybe four months felt good and you were having conversations every week about why home's not selling and and that's a different skill set than we've had to have the last two years so the sure. data to support that in the upfront conversation the expectation what you're talking about there michael so critical yeah, the absorption yep. rates have changed a lot in the last couple of years and like brett put in that stats section he had there for just from the time frame that was shown if you went back 10 years you would see since I've been in real estate since 2014, it's been a seller's market since 2014. We're still going to be a seller's market for a long time to come, I think, just because the inventory can't catch up. But the days on market will just be longer. Um, the price point may not be as high as we currently are, but 
you know, there's a lot of variables. We've had issues with appraisals just because of lack of comps from lack of inventory. So appraisals have gotten tougher for the appraisers out there. So we've had to contest a few in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I felt we've had quite a few contested appraisals lately. They, they're coming back up. They, it felt like it balanced out for a minute. Now it's like, oh, 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 I got an appraisal issue, got an appraisal issue, especially Northwest Georgia. Right. All right. So to kind of wrap up, and I really wanted Brett to share that because I think it's it kind of encompasses all the conversations we're happening right now in a very concise way. So I loved it. Brett, I'll, I'll start with you. If you gave one piece of an advice to an agent over the next six months, what piece of advice would that be? Um, re-engage your buyers. Conversion is where it's at. And you probably have people that you probably didn't uh give your full attention to or you weren't aggressive with because it was a tough market and a buyer wasn't great over the last six months because you were in such a competitive scenario i think there's a window of opportunity right now with inventory climbing that you're going to be able to get some of those buyers into houses and if you'll focus on the conversion of those buyers that have been in your pipeline for a while um, I think there's that opportunity because there's a, a unique motivation to do it now before interest rates go up. So you can create urgency with buyers and you got an opportunity of more inventory uh, coming on the market. I just think that you could go pick up quite a few more uh, sales and, and some volume if you would re-engage that buyer pipeline right now. Right on, right on. Simone, what would your one piece of advice be? Focus on the small things. I think people are missing some of the small things. Continue doing what you do in the beginning to continue to go to the end. Fantastic. Agree 100%. Michael, what's your one thing? You know, on the buyer's aspect, I would say buyer's consultation is mandatory and just show them the data. A lot of people just want to show up with a pre call letter and it's all the data they want to use. But mm. you sit down and spend that extra a half an hour in the beginning with a buyer that you're taking out, you know, treat it professionally, create a consultation, show them market stats, and just like Brett's saying, just manicure them to where they know what's going on. They can know that it may or may not have to be as aggressive as they'd like to be, but if they're serious, it's going to go ahead and let you know they're serious and you're not spending it. With this. Well said. Love that. Jeffrey, wrap us up. Uh, learn how to become an educator. You, you have to learn how to educate your sellers and buyers. Um, and teach them that what they're hearing and reading and seeing in the news is not always the accurate depiction of our market in Northwest Georgia. All right, Brett, I think that's it. Rock and roll. Thank, Thank you. you. Go Thanks, have a great guys. Week. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Simone. Sure. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.